tampering. There's All not right. much else she can admit to. Randy Sandler, round one, Arias. She won the first round against this prosecutor. The prosecutor took the bait. He went for the minutia rather than big points in terms of lying to the police, things that would really score points with that jury. He took the bait. Jody Arias wins the first round. One of the most heated exchanges between Jody and Prosecutor Juan Martinez was all about kinky sex with candy. Who knew? <laughs> but seriously, Prosecutor Juan Martinez and Jody spent several minutes sparring over pop rocks and Tootsie Pops. Yes, apparently they're used as sex toys. You do the math. Uh, Juan demanded to know whether Jody had a good time during her candy-coated sex games with Travis. Listen. You enjoyed the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks, correct? I enjoyed his attention. No, I want to know if you enjoyed the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks. In your view, you can go through an act and not enjoy it, but also enjoy it. What are you trying to say? Am I allowed to tell you what I'm trying to say? I want to know whether or not you enjoyed it. This encounter that we've been calling Lonnie's baptism, there were some Pop Rocks and Tootsie Pops that were involved, right? No, Lonnie's baptism did not involve Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks. I will say, sometimes I lost track of the point because of the unintentional hilarity of the sparring. Was this the best way to try to make the point that Jody enjoyed her sex games with Travis and only painted them as degrading, humiliating, and abusive when she was accused of murder and needed something to hang her self-defense claim on? And we'll start with Adahita on that. Well, I mean, you heard the sex tape, didn't you? How can anyone argue that telling your girlfriend that she sounds like a 12-year-old girl having an orgasm and that's hot, and that he fantasizes about tying her up to a tree and having anal sex with her, and that he wants her to feel raped and enjoy it, how can anyone argue that that is not sexual domination? Her argument here is self-defense. She's arguing she was sexually abused, sexually degraded. This ties into her argument that she was a victim, a battered woman, right. a victim of domestic Fred. violence. No. First of all, here's a lot of problems with that. There's absolutely no evidence that supports this. A lot of her claims were not backed up by her by her um, her diary and 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 her story changed over time. Her and I'm sorry. It is evidence. Her no, come on. You, you oh, know what? Okay. It is Let's evidence, but it's it. not Let's, good evidence on. and it's evidence of a lie. And here's the problem. If she really was battered and that's why she killed him, she should have gone to the police and she should have been on the witness stand for 90 minutes saying this is a terrible terrible tragedy. I'm sorry I killed the guy, but this is what he did to me. Not run the guy down for 9 days and then tell the jury, "Oh, by the way, I forget about the murder." So you know what? None of her testimony, none of her conduct is consistent with a woman who was battered. I'm sorry. She All right, is a Rini. liar. She is it a liar. It absolutely is you. consistent. Thank you. It is consistent <laughs> with somebody who's been battered and abused. The lack of memory during this event is consistent with someone who has suffered continuous abuse. So it's all relevant, it's all consistent, and it's all fitting right. perfectly Lack into the defense theory. Does she theory. remember erasing the camera? Does she remember putting the camera in the dishwasher? The, obviously, she remembers lying and saying she had nothing to do a bit with it until the police found the camera and got the pictures that she thought she erased. I'm sorry, not a She's single step that this event. woman has Absolutely. taken. And we haven't even started right. to talk about her efforts. We haven't even started to talk about her efforts to try and get someone to lie and perjure herself, oh, which yeah. I thought was the most scalding cross-examination yeah. I've seen in years. My new show. Yes. What you are talking about is one of the biggest stunners so far in the case. The prosecutor suddenly revealed that Jody, a while she's in jail, was writing secret messages about her defense to a friend. Messages scribbled in magazines that she tried to literally smuggle out of jail. The prosecutor forced Jody to read her secret messages out loud. On this page number 20, it says, read it for me. You testify so. It looks like it says we can fix this. Looks like it says directly contradicts what I've been saying for over a year. It says you f***ed up what you told my attorney the other, the next day. Interview what? was excellent, must talk ASAP. Get down here ASAP and see me before you talk to them again and before. Uh, Shannon Hogan, you're writing a book, Picture Perfect, on this case. Uh, what do you make of these secret messages written? You can see it right there. Uh, that, tell us. 
Yeah, that was one of the most shocking moments in court. We've known about this for a while. Um, she communicated with her boyfriend, Matthew McCartney, through jail, and he was involved in creating these letters that were later proven to be forgeries. And that was the only substantial evidence that was given to produce uh, her to back up her statement. So when he gave his first interview to his, the attorneys, he gave a, a very different story, and uh, Jody needed him back into the jail to talk about her version of events so he could come back and support her claim. So it was it was basically her solic soliciting false testimony from behind bars. Wow. And by the way, Matt McCartney, uh, I don't know whether he was involved in any kind of forgery. Uh, he's always invited on our show. We'd love to have him on to uh, give his side of the story and weigh in. On the other side, more debate, more shocking testimony.